All right, let's Bob Ross it up and uh, make some mountains fully inside of Blender. First, what we need to do is delete the default cube, of course, and we're going to go up to edit preferences and go to add-ons and or get extensions. Um, and you're going to want to enable ant landscape. It's in get extensions. You can just search up ant. Make sure that you enable this or download this and then enable it here in the add-ons tab. Next, what we can do is we can add in a new mesh, choose uh, landscape, and here we have our landscape generated. Down here on the drop-down menu, we have all of our different settings that we can use. Uh, if we're using mountains, I would recommend using ridged multifractal as our noise type. However, you can also go with different things depending on what type of landscape you'd like to make. Um, you can also change the gain, which I recommend doing and upping to like two, maybe even three. Um, offset's going to change your offset of all this noise. Your height down here is your displacement settings. That's going to change how much displacement there is in the height. We can change our fall off around the edges. You can also change your effect type to add waves and such in and mix those in a little bit to kind of change the shape of your mountain a little bit. And uh, when you're happy, I like playing through the seeds just a little bit to try and find something that I like. Um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to up my subdivisions up to like 600. For reference, 500 I think is about 90,000 subdivisions or not 90,000 sub, is about 90,000 vertices. You can always go bring this drop down menu down and come up here to your viewport overlays and turn on statistics and that'll show you how many vertices it is right now. So 360,000 for a blender mountain, that's not bad. So I'm gonna keep that as is. And now what we have is this mountain. The next thing we're gonna wanna do is set up our textures in a way that's gonna work easily for us. So I'm gonna go over to weight paint, uh, which you can get to if you just bring down this drop down menu and click weight paint. And then I'm gonna click weights and I'm gonna choose landscape eroder. Now this may take a second, uh, but once it loads, uh, we can play around with some settings. All right, so as you can see, we now have all of these different erosion maps basically generated by the weight paint. Now what I like to do is do like two or three iterations of the weight, basically multiplying the erosion on top of itself and it'll it'll take a second to load again. But there we go, now you can see that these areas are a little bit darker. And if we go over into our shader editor, we can start texturing this thing. So the method we're gonna use only works in cycles, just to be aware of, and I am going to make a new material. This whole entire process is gonna be based on a couple of nodes and a couple of masks. So uh, the first masks are gonna be based on these masks, which are our weight painted masks. So if I take my sediment mask, just plug the color into here, you'll see we have have a white and a black value based on these masks. Uh, we're also going to use some noise textures because I'm lazy. However, you can also paint your textures in if you want. But for now, I'm going to show you pretty much just how to do the color setup of everything. What's important is to go layer by layer. So we're going to start out with our stone layer first because that is pretty much our bottom layer. Everything else is going to be going on top of that. So first, let's just add in two image textures, both stone. So I recommend going through and downloading a bunch of different stone textures, um, grass textures, any sort of sediment or small gravel or dirt textures, and then definitely you should have a dirt texture uh, because that's going to make this process a lot quicker if you have them all on hand before. So first we have this stone texture and as you can see it's not displaying on our object because we don't have a UV unwrapped. What I'm going to do however anyway is I'm going to change this to box project and we are going to press Control T to bring up our texture and mapping coordinates. If Control T doesn't work for you, make sure you go into Edit Preferences and Enable Node Wrangler, and then you can use all those quick shortcuts that I'm gonna use. Grab Object and plug it into there. So now that we have this texture, I'm just gonna plug it into my principal BSDF, and I'm gonna add um, a duplicate of all of these nodes. Then we're just gonna go find another texture, and we will just display it onto the mesh. Next, with Node Wrangler, I'm going to select both these nodes, press Control-0, and that'll add a mix shader. Then we can add a noise texture followed by a color ramp. Plug the noise texture factor into the color ramp and plug the color ramp into the mix factor. Now, if we bring up these two values and bring them closer together, you'll start to see that we get a mix between both of our stone textures, and it's fully procedural. If you want to hand paint this, however, uh, all you have to do is add an image texture. Make sure your mesh is unwrapped and uh, then you can just paint wherever you want with uh, black and white values in the texture paint. So 
Next, what we can do is one thing uh, I don't like is the difference in color and brightness in these things. So I'm just gonna bring an RGB curve in and I'm gonna bring it onto my second mountain texture just so they blend a little bit better into each other. And always save your projects because you never know when a crash is coming. So next is grass layer. So let's add in another mix shader, add in another principled BSDF, and we'll copy all these nodes as well. I'm gonna find a grass texture that I like. I'm gonna plug it into the mix shader. Next, what we can do is we can add in a color ramp, a separate XYZ, and a normal map. Now, the order is gonna be normal map into the vector of the separate XYZ. We're gonna choose the Z value because that is our up and down, and color ramp is gonna go into the mix factor. Now, if we bring this black value down, you'll notice that it gets rid of some of our grass. Uh, we can basically choose the angle the steepest angle that grass can grow on. And there we go, that looks okay. I'm gonna keep it something like that. And just to make the grass look a little bit better, we're gonna turn up the roughness and turn the specular down quite a bit. Now you can go an extra step with this mask and you can add a mixed color node, add in a gradient texture and give it some mapping coordinates. I like to use object mode. And then if you flip it by 90 degrees on the y-axis, plug the gradient texture through a color and plug it into this mix color node. Then change the mix to multiply and bring it up. You can then use uh, this white value as a factor for uh, how high the grass can cut off point, like right about there. Next, what we can do is we can add another mix shader. Add another principled BSDF. And I generally like to just duplicate um, all these colors I had before. Uh, for my stone texture right here. Grab them all, bring them down here. Next, I'm gonna use a mix color node to mix these two together. And for the factor of the mix, I'm gonna use my exact same noise texture that I use. Now I'm gonna link these two together and not duplicate them just so that anytime I change this, it'll change this value down here as well. Next, we can plug that mix up into our principal BSDF. And what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna add an RGB curve and bring the value down a little bit. And now, if we use an attribute, we can give it one of these vertex groups. Now, the one that I think works pretty well is using water and plugging it into here. And let's lower this value. And if we add in a color ramp, we can basically decide how sharp of a change happens between this color ramp area. Basically, what we're just trying to do is make everything blend nicely. Uh, up here, we have some issues. So maybe we'll go with a different one like flow rate, see if that helps things a little bit. And if we bring down this white value, it'll make it so our maximum darkening value is pretty low. But overall, yeah, using flow rate works pretty well in that case, as well as water will work fine. Uh, you just need to lower this max value a bit. I'm going to stick to flow rate. And it's just going to darken these areas. And uh, maybe if you wanted, you could have it be less rough. So it's more reflective as if it's uh, still wet or recently rained on. We're going to copy the same process. Another set of image texture, principled BSDF, and a mixed color node, which we will then mix again. This time we're going to use another attribute and it's going to be called sediment. And we're going to plug that into our mixed color node right here. And then go find any sort of rocky dirt texture. Now we can use a color ramp again on this value uh, just to bring things together a little bit more. And because of the size of this texture, I'm gonna bring it down something like 10. And then I'll just play with this color ramp and bring these values there until I get something that I like. Now, one thing I like doing in this area is grabbing a mixed color node and putting it where our shader is. And then I'll mix the color with itself and choose multiply and then we'll grab an RGB curve and bring one of these values down a little bit so it's darker. Then we can use this attribute node as a factor for the multiply node. And if we use these two colors, we can then mix in very dark value and a not very dark value. And basically all I'm really trying to do here is define some sort of sediment flow that uh, might happen. And I'm gonna play around with the colors and just play around with this color ramp. And I like this one, this one looks pretty nice. Now, next, let's add a bit of snow. So we can add a mix color node again, add in another mix shader, plug our new color into the bottom, and we can use a snow texture. If you can't find a snow texture, a nearly pure white color will also work. For a snow, I generally use a color attribute, and I use the name deposit on it uh, for our deposit weight paint, and then just bring in another color ramp, and we can bring this white value up a bit and we'll have some snow up here 
towards the top on the peaks and kind of trailing down the mountain. Now, uh, one thing you can do also, similar to what we did with this uh, grass texture, is if we want, we can add a gradient and multiply these two colors together and then plug that mix into the factor. That way, um, if you want, you can flip these two around and basically have your snow kind of break apart towards the bottom. Now, I do find that ease is probably a better way to go with this one as you don't want such a sharp edge. And there we go. Uh, in this case, you can also use some other types of these things, such as uh, you can use avalanche or avalanced as it's called, or you can use sediment PCT, just bring these values in a little, or you could combine any number of these things together to get whatever result that you'd like. So what I might do is just combine two together, and the way I'll mix them is using screen, and we'll use water and say, we'll use water and sediment, to mix these two values together. And then we can plug that into the top of our multiply and plug our gradient texture back through. All right, let's add a tiny bit more detail to our rocks. So what we're gonna do, one more mix shader, I'm going to copy one of my rock shaders from over here. We're gonna plug this into our mix shader, grab a new attribute. Then we're gonna call this one scour. So scour, this map basically is saying that there is too much steepness on the slope and uh, the only thing that is there is bare rock. So I'm gonna plug this color into here. We are going to grab a color ramp and bring the values closer together like we have been doing. And next, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna grab a brand new uh, rock texture. And in my case, I generally like going with a sharper, more jagged thing that's uh, maybe a bit lighter and also maybe a bit um, discolored. Now, I don't want it too discolored, so I'm going to bring the saturation down just a tiny bit. But basically, we want to add this to the very end because it's going to be too steep for snow to sit on it. All right. Now, one step that I forgot for the grass, uh, what you may want to do and what I like to do is mix a dirt and, and a grass texture together uh, based on this factor. So I'm going to add in a mix color node and I'll duplicate a dirt texture down here and these two together. And instead of using a color ramp, so I'm gonna plug this separate X, Y, Z, Z value into our multiply, and then I'm gonna add a map range. And uh, if you've never used a map range, it's essentially the same thing as a color ramp. This value and this value, they control your black values color. Uh, the two min controls black values color, two max controls your white value. And then your from min controls where the black value is and your from max describes where the white value is. So I want a lot of contrast on this. So I'm going to up this to like 10 and I want this to be like 0.8. Now we want to plug this mix of our map range down here into our mix color node for the grass. And as you can see, this is going to get rid of all of our grass. Uh, but what we're going to do next is add in a math node. And then we're going to just subtract a little bit off of this mix. And that way we'll get this uh, edge line where the dirt meets the stone and it'll just look a little bit better. So what we can do is just go through and I'm going to make everything scaled correctly. Currently we have a lot of nodes I know. Uh, we are going to add a few more. Let's go over to our rock shaders which are going to be these. Um, we can if we want add in a frame to keep these guys organized. So if you wanted you could do frame, click on your frame, press F2 and name it like rock one. That way it's a bit easier to find. So next we want to duplicate our image texture with control shift D and that is going to keep its uh, current input and let's go find the normal map for this one. We're going to plug it right into the normal and we're going to make sure it's changed to non-color. Now we need to plug this first through a normal map and that will help make everything look a lot better. Then we can do the same thing, control shift D this again and we're going to grab our displacement map and we'll plug this through a bump and then we're going to plug our normal map through our bump in this normal slot and plug this normal out into here. Now what you're going to see is we have a bit of clipping. Change the strength on this one to like 0.5 and we can bring the strength down on this one a little bit. Uh, but uh, something that we can do to make this uh, stand out a lot more is we can change the distance to like 25 or something and it's going to bring this value really really strong. That way I can just change the strength now from here, get rid of the clipping and uh, yeah everything should look okay. Uh, one thing I like to do is make my texture a little bit lighter after this because it's just gonna just gonna help even things out a little bit. All right uh, next we need to copy this for our other material so I'm just going to grab all four of these control C and control V them down here 
and we're going to copy this to our other stone material. So make sure you change your images and make sure when you change the images, they're set to non-color. And finally, since we didn't duplicate them with Control Shift D, we need to plug them into our mapping coordinates. And then we can just play around with our strength and our blending until we get something that looks okay. For the grass, personally, I just add in my grass normal map. And we're going to add in a bump node, plug it into the height, and then plug it into the normal. And the grass just needs a little bit. It's not going to do a ton for it. Uh, we're going to make the grass a little bit more interesting by adding another bump node. And it's going to be connected into the normal. Then if we grab a noise texture and plug the noise texture in the height, we'll turn up this value. We can add like clumps to this grass by doing this and we'll just bring this value down to pretty low. All right, for our rock sediment, pretty much the same thing. We're just gonna add in our displacement. Now for this one, for the water, we've got uh, multiple different normal maps that are gonna be plugged into each other. So we're gonna wanna grab these two, shift E them over, and then we're gonna wanna grab these ones as well. And we will just control C and uh, control V plug the top one into the top value and the bottom one into the bottom value and then we'll use that same color ramp noise texture that controlled our rock mix before now you're also going to want to plug in the corresponding um, mapping coordinates into these just to make things work properly and finally for this last rock setup I'm going to do the same thing we did before control shift D normal map into the normal set to non color and then I'm going to do control shift D again change the displacement map and plug it into the height of our bump and plug that into the normal just so we get a lot of bump off those. That's pretty much it. Um, you can define the roughness uh, with maps or you can just turn up the roughness value. I uh, am trying to keep this material as low as possible. Uh, so basically just turning up the roughness and stuff can help with that. And now it's semi procedural, which is very nice. So if I want, I can bring this from min value up. You can have grass very high up, which is cool. And then, yeah, you can just play around with the mountain, uh, make it however you like it to be. And, uh, yeah, it should just work. It is better for a background piece than it is for a foreground piece. However, it should work pretty well in both. And a lot of making this stuff look good is with lighting. Um, your lighting situation is going to significantly improve how this thing looks. So like this angle looks very, very good. And if I get it a little bit of an HDR light and just bring this shadow so that it's in a good spot right here, it really helps the way that this thing looks. Whereas if I just look at it flat like this with light hitting it directly, it doesn't look as good. Overall, whole process in total is about like 30 minutes of work, maybe even 20 uh, if I'm not talking the whole time. Uh, I have gone ahead and made for myself a procedural version of this so that I can work with it whenever I'd like. All I have to do is some slider values and everything kind of works on its own. Change the amount of dirt, which is cool. Uh, change how much snow is in this mountain right here. Change the maximum angle that it can spawn on. Change its overall heights to get a fully snowy mountain. And we've got our, our sediment amount, so I can mix in amounts of sediment into this mountain. Change how sharply it mixes. I change my, my noise texture for my cliffs. So for me, this is the kind of stuff I like to do. Um, I can make a tutorial for this if anyone's interested because uh, it's essentially the same thing we did. I was just using mixed color nodes instead and a bunch of different mix factors, but it is, it's a process. So anyway, uh, hopefully you've enjoyed this tutorial. Hopefully you can uh, make your own landscapes in Blender now. I'll see you guys later and bye-bye.